In this video, I want to share some of the selection techniques I use when editing photos with the Nick collection. I've already converted the original RAW file and opened it in Nick Viveza. I'm using Nick Viveza because it makes understanding control points easier. Let's start by adding a single control point to see what it's doing. You can do this by clicking the Add Control Point icon and then clicking on a point in the image to select it. Control points use something called U-Point technology. The idea is that you point at the thing you want to edit, which is then selected by the control point. What happens with the control point is that the software is sampling the area of the photo at its centre. It then selects any similar pixels in the image based on the sampled colour and tone. The control point is also added to this selective adjustments list over on the right of the interface. To see what's being selected, we can turn on the mask view by clicking the mask icon next to the control point in the list. The white areas you see are what's being selected, whilst nothing is selected where you see black. What's great about control points is that they're interactive. As you move them around the image, they keep sampling new areas and we see the selection change. We can also adjust the size of the control point using the slider arm. Alternatively, we can click and drag with our mouse on the edge of the control point itself. Now notice that the edge of the control point isn't the edge of the selection. The selection extends about the same distance again and is feathered to blend our adjustment into the image. And this is where the new diffusion control introduced in the Nick Collection 6 comes in useful. It controls this feathering around the edge of the control point. By default, it's at 100%, which means the maximum feather. Now watch how the mask changes as I move the diffusion slider left and right. By moving it to the left, I reduce the feather, and when I move it right, it increases it. Notice also that this feather area extends both outwards and inwards from the edge of the control point. Let's use the example now of wanting to select the white areas of the pier to adjust them. We can position the centre of the control point on that area that we want to select and you can see the mask is updated. Now the selection spreads beyond the pier, but we can reduce its spread using the diffusion slider. This is great, but it has the unwanted side effect of making our adjustments easier to spot. If I turn off the mask view and increase the brightness, you can see what I mean. This problem isn't really being caused by the feather though, it's being caused by too much of the surrounding area of the pier being selected. And this is where the luminance and chrominance sliders come in. We'll start with the luminance slider, which controls how sensitive or accurate the control point selection is to brightness. When I move the slider all the way to the right, pixels need to be a close match to the luminance of the sample point to be selected. When a pixel is slightly lighter or darker, it's ignored and not included in the selection. Now move the slider over to the left and the brightness of the pixels is virtually ignored. The chrominance slider works in the same way, but it's sampling colour and not lightness. When the slider is over to the left, the colour is ignored, but move it to the right and the colour needs to be an accurate match. So. To make our selection of the pier more accurate, we want to use a high value of both the luminance and chrominance sliders. And this is where something weird happens. Because we're using a low diffusion value to limit the spread of our selection, it's actually easier to spot in other areas that aren't the pier. But look what happens when we use a high value. It's blended more smoothly and is harder to spot. What's most important to make an accurate selection though, is to limit the size of the control point. Now a word of warning, it can be tempting to think that you need to create a perfect mask and selection, but you don't. If we hide the mask view and look at the effect of the adjustments instead, we only see them on the pier and not the sky. Next, suppose we want to apply the same adjustments to more of the pier. The easy way to do this is by selecting the first control point in the list and then clicking the duplicate button. We can then drag the new control point into position. I'll magnify the image to help with the positioning. Now because the new control point is a duplicate of the first, it has identical adjustments. So we now have two control points selecting different areas of the pier but applying the same adjustments. This is how to make an irregular shape selection in the Nick collection. And when you do this, it's a good idea to group the control points. 
To create a group, we select all the control points we want to use in the list by holding down the command key and then clicking them. On a Windows PC, use your control key for this. Once the control points are selected, click the group icon to create the group. You can then see the new group in the selective adjustment list, replacing the two control points. As before, we can click the mask icon to view the group. Now we can see the selection in white, just like the control points we looked at earlier. Each group then only has one set of adjustment controls to deal with. But something that's often overlooked about groups is that we can still select the individual control points they contain. This allows us to reposition and resize each of the control points without needing to remove them from the group. The group also has the same luminance, chrominance and diffusion sliders in the colour sensitivity area. Now for a couple of important tips that I want to share. Let's say that you want to reset the colour sensitivity sliders. Rather than clicking and dragging each of the sliders, you can double click them and they then return to their default position. Now we can see the areas outside the group are being selected again. I wanted to show you this because it's possible to protect these areas by adding new control points. Click the new control point icon and then click the area you want to protect. If we now look at the mask for just the group, we can see that the new control point restricts the spread of the group selection. But we can take things further by using the luminance, chrominance and diffusion sliders for the control point. It's then possible to duplicate the control point and use that to protect other areas from adjustment. These protection control points can then be placed into a single group which you can rename to something more meaningful. Let's turn our attention now though to the new control line feature that was added to the NIT Collection 6. Like control points, it also uses viewpoint technology, so should feel familiar. I can add a control line to this image by clicking the icon next to the control point icon. Then I can position my mouse pointer before clicking and dragging down. As I do this, you can see the new control line being drawn. This is selecting the area above the point I first clicked on. If I add another control line, but this time drag up, it selects the area below the starting point. It's then possible to click and drag the control line to reposition it as well as rotate it. Now, although it's using viewpoint technology, the control line is slightly different to control points in that the sample point isn't at its center. Instead, there's a movable sample point represented by an eyedropper icon. Let's say that we want to select the colored clouds in the sky. All we need to do is click and drag the sample point to that area of the image. And like the control point, we have the luminance and chrominance sliders to adjust the sensitivity. There isn't, however, a diffusion slider, and that's because we control the spread of the selection using the bottom edge of the control line. Another feature that's shared with the control point is that we can select our two control lines and then group them. This allows us to apply identical adjustments to both the sky and its reflection in this image. Now, whilst control lines are new to the NIC collection, they have been around for a little bit longer. In this video, I make good use of them when editing an image in DxO Photo Lab. It's a good one to watch next if you want to learn more about using control lines. Thanks for watching today. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you soon for another video.